So now we can see that when I'm moving the face here around, we can see that now we're looking up. We can see the blue line here actually like gets larger the more we look up. So we're scaling the line based on how much are we looking in what direction. So we can see it follows around the head. If I'm trying to do circles, it will just follow around my head, the blue line, scale based on how much are we looking in a direction. Now we're looking down, now we're facing forward, looking right, looking left, now we're looking up. Hey guys, and welcome to a new video on this computer vision tutorial. In this video here, we're going to do head post estimation. So we'll use media pipe to actually like get the face meshes as we've done in the previous videos. And then we're going to use open speed to actually like do the post estimation of the head uh, that we're detecting with media pipe. But first of all, remember to join Discord server, I'll link to it down in the description here. You can join the channel, shadows about computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can also become a member of the channel if you just want to support the channel with a small monthly fee. Everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. Also, if you have some problems in your own projects and so on, you can also become a member and I can help you out and guide you in the right direction. So thank you guys. First of all, before we're going to jump into the actual code and do the head post estimation with MediaPipe and OpenZV, I'm first of all, I'm going to give a shout out to all these awesome members of the channel that I'm helping out with the project or they're just supporting the channel. Uh, with a small monthly fee every month and a special shout out to Audio Basket here for the massive channel support. So we're going to jump into the code here. We're going to use media pipe and opens V to actually do this head post estimation. We've done post estimation in opens V before and we've also done the face mesh detection with media pipe. So we're kind of combining those two videos uh, together. So if you want to know more details about how to use post estimation with opens V, some different kind of like objects where we're doing camera calibration first and so on, or if you just want to know how we can do face mesh detection, make sure to check those videos out. I go way more into details in those videos. In this video here, we're just going to combine them to some kind of project where we can actually like do head post estimation. We're going to see the results here at the end of the video. And it's actually like some really nice and cool results uh, that we get as we're going to see. So first of all here, we're just going to import the different kind of modules uh, that we need. So we're going to o o import OMCV, MediaPipe, NumPy, and then time because we're going to time how, how long it actually takes to run this algorithm or this post estimation here off the head when we're doing this face mesh detection too. So first of all, we're going to use media pipe to actually just open up this face mesh detector. So we're going to have our MP underscore face uh, underscore mesh, and we're going to set that equal to the media pipes solution. So these are just the machine learning solutions that are provided by um, media pipe. We just go in and take the face mesh. Then we're going to set up, set up the face mesh detection here. We're going to set up minimum detection confidence. So we need a confidence score higher than 0.5 to actually like say that this is actually like a, a detection or like we should actually like take this as a phase and then do a uh, face mesh detection on that. We also have a tracking co uh, co confidence score here. So we need to be above that threshold too when we're tracking around the face or like the, the face mesh in the image from frame to frame. So here we're just going to set up the drawing utilities. So we have the MP solutions drawing utilities so we can actually like display the whole face mesh that we're detecting in the images. We're going to set up some drawing specifications here where we, where we can just set up the thickness and also the circle radius for the face, face mesh that I'm going to show you uh, later on when we're actually like going to display the, the results. So now we're going to open up our video capture. It will just be opening up our webcam. We'll store it in this variable or this object capture here or we'll cap. And then we go down into our while loop and then we just run our while loop as long as our webcam is actually like open. Then we're going to read in an image from our webcam. We're going to store it in the image variable here. But then after we've read in the image, we're just going to start a timer so we can so we can actually like time the algorithm, how long it takes and how many frames per second that we get when we're running this head post estimation here with media pipe and open CV. So first of all, we need to convert our images from BGR to RGB because the models that we're passing our images through with MediaPipe uses RGB where OpenSV reads in the images as BGR. First of all, we're just going to flip the images here so we can actually like get a self view display later on so it's not like mirrored or like it, the image is not flipped when we're going to show the results. Then we just have this convert a CVT color, convert it from BGR to RGB. Then we can set the, uh, the image here writable equal to false. So we can't write to the image. We'll only be able to read from the image. We just we only need to read from it when we're passing it through our uh, neural network or our machine learning model, which, we're, which, which, which is what we're going to do down here in line 29. We just call this face mesh here, which is the actual face mesh detector object that we have created up at the top of the program. Then we just call this dot process and then we just pass in the image that we want to f uh, feed forward in our actual like, uh, machine learning model. 
So we just pass our image in here, it will process it and it will store all the results in this results variable. Then we can then later on go in and get all the different kind of facial uh, landmarks that we're actually like, detecting in the images. So the idea behind this machine learning solution here is that first of all, it is actually like running a face detector and then it crops the image to that face and then it does like face, um, face mess detection of different kind of features in the faces um, after I've cropped it and then it passes that through uh, the neural network. So right now after here, we're going to set our image um, writable here again. So we can actually like write to our image, um, display some things on it and so on. Then we're going to convert it back here again from RGB to BGR so we can actually like use the methods and operations from OpenSV to draw on it and, and do a lot of different kind of stuff uh, with our image. Then we're going to store our image height and also the image width and also the number of channels of our image here. So we just take image.shape. We're going to use this information because the results that we get out from uh, this face mess the process method up here, it will actually be normalized values. So we need to scale our uh, scale those values with our image dimensions. So it will be the height and the width. Then we're going to have two lists here, which is our faces in 3D and 2D, because when we're doing post estimation with OMCV, we're using an image based approach. We need some 3D reference points that we're mapping down to the image plane. And then we're trying to find uh, the pose or like the rotation and translation from those 3D points down to the image plane of our 2D points. So it will be the corresponding, uh, corresponding points in 3D projected down into the image plane where we have our 2D uh, facial landmarks that we're detecting with MediaPipe. And this one here, we're just going to use a monocular camera. So we're just going to scale our 3D values out in the space with some value. You could use derivation to get the exact values of the phase that you actually like want to do post estimation of. But this is just for simplicity. And we're going to just going to scale those values out in the environment or in the world. And then we're going to protect them down and do post estimation of those points. We might create another video where we're going to do more detail with derivation calibrating our cameras first of all, then get the, get the exact depth of the 3D object that we want to do post estimation of and so on. So make sure to hit the subscribe button under the video here and also hit the bell notification so you get a notification when I upload some new awesome videos that you can use in your own projects or if you're just learning OpenCV or programming in general. So down here, after we've created our two lists where we're going to store our 3D points and our 2D points off the face, we're just going to go down here into into results. We just check if there's any results. So inside the results, we have dot multi face landmarks, and if there's actually like some detections, we we can act like this will be true. So if there's any detections, we go down and then we just run through all the face landmarks detections that we have done. So if there's only one person in the image, it will only have like one result where we just have all the face landmarks here that we can access individually um, inside this for loop. So here we just run through all the landmarks that were detected in our image. Then we go down into another for loop where we're just going to take the index and also this LM value. So actually we're just running through all the landmarks in our face mess detection. These are the indexes here for the different kind of like nose, ears, mouth, and eyes that we're going to use to actually do the post estimation. You can use some other points or you can actually like use more points if you want to. But this one here, we're just going to use these six points here as we're going to use in the PNP method. So it will just be, for example, like the nose, the mouth, the eyes and the ears. Then we're going to use those points and then we get the corresponding 3D points. And then we try to do post estimation with those two corresponding points. So down here, if the index is one, we're just going to set the nose 2D here and nose 3D to, to, the, to the exact values that we're detecting. And then we just scale out the values for our 3D nose here, um, which is uh, 3000. So we just scale the value out. 3000 into the 3000 into the world coordinate system. So this will just be our nodes coordinate that we're going to use later on to actually like draw a line. So we can actually like see where we're looking in the image frame or like in the world when we're doing head post estimation. Then we're going to get our X and Y values, which will just be the face uh, coordinates for all the different kind of coordinates that we want to track. So it will just be all the indexes that we have here. We want to store the X and Y values of those. We just go in here, take the exact value. So this will be the landmark value. And then we'll also get the corresponding index for that landmark. So we go in, take a landmark, and then we take the X value and the Y value of those. And then we just scale it with the width of our image and the height of the win image, because these, these values here that we get out, they are normalized. So we need to uh, convert them back here again onto our image space. Then we'll get the X and Y value for the nose, the ears, the eyes, and also the mouth and so on. And then we'll just append those 
XY coordinates to our face 2D and also to our face 3D. But for the face 3D, we also need to store our set value here or like a C value, um, our C value here for the facial landmarks. So now we're going to have this 2D faces and 3D face uh, list here with all the different kind of uh, coordinates. So our 2D coordinates and our 3D coordinates. And then later on, we can use that to actually like, um, to actually like use that in the salt PNP method from OpenCV. We're going to convert our list here to a numpy array and we just specify the D type here to floating point 64 values. We're going to do the exact same thing for face 3D. And then we're going to set up the camera matrix. If you're a calibrator camera, I'm going to create another video where we're going to calibrate a camera, do all of this process here over again. But this week here, we're just going to make it simple. So we're just going to set the focal length here equal to one uh, times the width of our image. Then we can set up our camera matrix. So the intrinsic parameters of our uh, camera, uh, camera. So again, if you have calibrated your camera, you will get out the intrinsic and also the extrinsic parameters, but we only need the intrinsic parameters in this video here and also the distortion parameters. So this is not this distance matrix. It's the distortion, this distortion like parameters or like values. You will also get those out if you're calibrated your camera. But here we can see we have our focal length, our focal length, and then we have our optical center here in the x-axis and optical center in the y-axis. We get our distortion parameters. We will just set those as zero. So we'll just have a vector with four values of zero. So we don't have any distortion in our image. Again, if you're a calibrated camera, you will get your camera matrix. You will get the focal length and you will also get the distortion parameters. And then you actually have everything you need to solve this PNP method here and get your actual like pose of those points uh, that we created or like that it detected in the image frame. So we use salt PNP here. We pass in the 3D, uh, 3D points of our face detected. We pass in the 2D points of a face detected, and then we need to pass in the camera matrix and also the distortion parameters here. So now we have everything. The output from this one here is that if we're actually like successfully um, estimating the pose of those points, we also get the rotation vector. So how much is the point actually like rotated in the image? And we also get the translation vector. So how, how much is the our point actually like translated around? So this will just be a transformation of the of the points in our actual like image plane that were detected with ohms or like with media pipes um, face mesh detector so down here we get our rotation vector we want to process this uh, more because this is actually like what we want when we're doing head post estimation so we want to say like how much is are we looking in in what direction so we get a rotation vector first of all we're going to convert it to a rot rotation matrix we're just going to use ohms to do that so we have this rodriguez we just pass in our rotation vector and then the output will be our rotation matrix and also the decopian matrix, uh, which we're not going to use. So then we can get the actual like angles for all the axes. So we're interested in getting the, the, the rotation around the X axis and also the rotation around the Y axis. So we can actually like say how much are we looking in what direction in our image plane. We, we can't really detect like the C, the C axis because it will just be this rotation around um, the camera. So now we can go down get the actual like angles again we're just using um ohms v so we have this rq decomposition three by three rotation matrix we just pass in our rotation matrix and we get out the angles um a new rotation matrix and we also get these these q values so it will be a rotation matrix around all of the x-axis the y-axis and the c-axis but here in this angle we can just get directly the x y and c c values again those values here will be normalized so we need to so we need to actually convert them back. We're going to multiply that with 360 degrees. So we actually like get the number of degrees that we're that we're looking in what direction from this from the center of our image. So now we actually have the rotation here for the x-axis, the y-axis, and the c-axis as we're going to display on the image when we're going to run the program here as well. So now when we have done this, we have estimated the pose of the head. We have detected all the points that we need. We have done the, the post estimation of our head and now we actually like have the angles. So now we can just set up some if statements checking in what direction are we actually like looking. And then we can also draw a line for the direction that we're looking and also scaling that uh, line based on how much are we looking in what direction as we're going to see at the end. So here we're just going to say like if the Y value is, is less than minus 10, we are looking left. If the Y value is greater than 10, we're looking to the right. And if the X value is, is, is less than minus 10, we're looking down and the other way around. If it's greater than 10, we're looking up. And if none of these here are the cases, we're just looking forward. We're just facing the camera 
um, if, the, if these values here, I belong 10. So now we can go down here and actually like just predict the points back again. So we can see if we have actually done um, a good enough post estimation. So we just pass in the nose 3D, our rotation vector and our translation vector. These are the values that we get out from the solve PNP method. Again, we pass in the camera matrix and also this distortion parameters. And then we're just projecting our points because now we have actually like projected our points out in the 3D world. Then we're going to project those points back down to the image plane. So we're going to project the nose down to the image plane. We can also use this information to draw the line. So now we're able to just get the nose 3D coordinate here projected down to the image plane. And again, we get the Jacobian. So then we can set up the two points that we actually like want to draw the line. So the line in what direction that we're actually like looking to actually just display how our fa face or like our head post estimation works and to see in what direction are we actually like looking um, when re with respect to the camera. So here we just have our point one. It will just be the nose to the X value and, and nose to the Y value, which will be the first point. So the, the line just starts from the tip of our nose. And then we're just going to scale those values out with the degrees in the x y direction and also in the x direction and then we just scale that with a value of 10 so we actually like just create a line and then the line will be scaled um uh, it will be scaled based on how much are we actually like looking in what direction as you're going to see so now we're just going to draw the line with OpenCV. we pass in the image that we want to draw the line the two points that we want to draw the lines between the colors and the and the line and the thickness and so on then the last thing before we're going to run the program is just that we're just going to put out this text. So we're just going to display in what direction are we looking. We're going to display the X, Y and the C rotation. So how much are we actually rotating around the X axis, the C axis. Um, so these are the values that we're, that we're actually basing or like that we're, that we're actually like set up this if statements for. So just in what direction are we looking, but just to display like how much are we actually like looking um, in the X direction, C directions and Y direction and so on. Then we're going to end the timer because now we have done all the code that we want. We just want to calculate how many frames per seconds do our algorithm actually like get when we run this program. We display our frames per seconds and then we're just going to draw the landmarks here with the drawing utilities that we set up at the start at the program. We're going to imshow, show. So we're just going to have our head post estimation. We're going to show the image where we're drawing all of this stuff on. If we had escape or like queue here at our keyboard at any time, it will just terminate the program and it will release our webcam. So now we've been through the whole code here and we're now going to run it. I've, I will upload this to my GitHub. I'll link to the GitHub down in the description. You can go, just go in there, take the code directly, and then you can just play around with it yourself, try it out yourself and, and try to optimize it and use it in your own projects and own prob, uh, problems. So here we can see, I'm just going to close it here and then we're going to comment out this print frames per second because we're already displaying it in the image frame. So now here we can see that we get up the image. It looks really nice. We're detecting all the meshes, all the different kinds of features in the image here. We can see my eyebrows, my nose, my mouth here that is moving and also the face. So we get this really nice face mesh that we're detecting with MediaPipe. We can see up here at the top, we're now facing forward. And then we can see the blue line here is actually like in what direction are we looking based, at, at, uh, based on these values up here that we're estimating. So this is the post estimation of our actual like point that we're detecting with with our face mesh detector from MediaPipe. So this is Sol PNP, this is MediaPipe, and this is the own, our own logic that we set up. So now we can see that when I'm moving the face here around, we can see that now we're looking up. We can see the blue line here actually like gets larger the more we look up. So we're scaling the line based on how much are we looking in what direction. So we can see it follows around the head. If I'm trying to do circles, it will just follow around my head, the blue line, scale based on how much I was looking in a direction. Now we're looking down, now we're facing forward, looking right, looking left, now we're looking up. Again, we're running at around 100 frames per second, so this is really fast. I'm just running on a standard low budget CPU, so you can run it on your own computer, laptops. Um, as well, we're not using any hardware accelerators or GPUs. We can see all the coordinates up here. So right now I'm, I'm basically in the middle. If I'm moving up here, we can see that we get a, a larger X value. If I'm going in the opposite direction, we can see that we get a negative value. And if I'm moving to the sides, we will actually like get a um, displacement or like a change in the Y value. So now we can see it is positive Y value and now it will be negative. We can't really see anything for the C axis because it will just be it will just be the camera axis that we're actually like facing. So this is really nice, really cool. It can be used for a lot of different kind of things. 
like for example autonomous cars you want to detect if people are actually like looking down at their phones while they're driving so now right now it's looking down if it has, if the person has been looking down for three five seconds give them a warning we're going to create some projects with that it, it it's going to be really really nice and really cool and i'm really looking forward to it we can do a lot of different kind of things with head post estimations and we can also have multiple faces in the image it will still uh, do all of this here um, together so thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification on the video here so you get a notification when i upload new videos or projects about computer vision deep learning and so on we're kind of combining some of the videos creating some really cool projects also remember to like the video here if you like the content and you want more in the future it really helped me and the youtube channel out in a massive way i'm currently actually doing this computer vision tutorial where we're talking about camera calibration how we can combine some of these things basic image operations on the images um, how we can use stereo vision to get depth in the image create point clouds and do operations on that so if you're interested in the computer vision tutorial i'll link to it up here or else i'll just see you next video guys bye for now